thank you. Uh, my name is Matt Berg, and I'm at Columbia University. I'm also uh, from Nairobi, so not to be mistaken for my big brother, a white African down here. Um, uh, but we're really delighted to be here. Today we're going to be talking about uh, ecosystems and kind of around the idea of how do we use technology to improve global health. Um, but ecosystem is kind of a loaded word. So let's start by kind of de deconstructing a little bit, like what does it mean actually when we talk about ecosystems? You guys have any ideas? Dickie, maybe? Sure. Uh, hi, I'm Dickie Settle. I'm the Director of Health Workforce Informatics for IntraHealth. Work on Capacity Plus Global Project and lots of other IntraHealth projects supporting open source health workforce technologies and systems. Um, and to me, ecosystems of, of technology and information really refer to all of the complex pieces of information that come together, if, at least in the context of healthcare, to solve a problem. But particularly in healthcare, you might think, hey, there are medical record systems that help support care. There's uh, the mobile community health worker systems you heard about. There are resource systems like uh, financial information systems, there are pharmacy and supply chain systems, health workforce systems, to bring all the components together that really help healthcare happen. And these systems, if they don't work together and come together into a more complex whole, they're not going to meet the needs effectively. They're going to cause all kinds of redundancies and problems. But to go even further, an ecosystem, when you think about it in the biological standpoint, it also really creates an environment to thrive. You have to have the light, the energy, the water, all of the factors that enable the different plants and animals and microbes and the whole system to be able to work together to thrive and be successful. Maybe not just thrive, also I guess, yeah, die, die maybe. Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes they do need to die. I don't know, what do you guys think? Um, yeah, I guess just to build on that, uh, my name is Tobias McNulty. I am a co-founder of Cactus Group here in North Carolina. And we build and help web applications for partner organizations, um, and we're currently uh, leading the redesign and redevelopment of Rapid SMS, which is a platform for building sort of SMS-based and health applications. Um, so from our perspective, okay, Can you guys hear it all? Keep Any talking, of us? They'll set your levels. Okay. <laughs> Keep talking. Test, test, one, two, three. Test, 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 test. Can you hear me now? Can you hear me now? Cool. Um, so my name again, if you didn't hear, is Tobias McNulty. I'm a co-founder at Cactus Group here in North Carolina. Um, we build mHealth and web applications for um, our partner organizations, and we're currently redesigning and redeveloping the uh, sort of next version of Rapid SMS, which is a platform for building these mHealth SMS-based applications. So from our perspective as developers thinking about ecosystems, um, I think a lot of the problems in technology projects come down to uh, the community of the people in this sort of developer uh, ecosystem that you know are trying to build or solve a problem in the uh, health space. So uh, thinking about the the actual people writing the software, uh, the the folks coming to the table with some requirements who are out in the field, uh, the the users who are going to be um, taking advantage of the system, hopefully, uh, to, to better the, the health of monks in the developing world. Um, so thinking about all of those people and how they uh, work together in this ecosystem is sort of a, a passion of mine from the technical perspective. So do you have anything to add to that? Yes, uh, okay, I'm Karim, coming from Senegal. I'm founder of Joko Labs, which is an initiative. We, we build a social change hub based on co-working space, and we build community around. And the idea is to uh, do an open innovation uh, uh, ecosystem, actually. So, <laughs> so we, we start, we, we're very inspired by the open source movement, actually. And I'm also an activist uh, on open source. I'm a member of the Council of the Free Software and <coughs> Open Source Movement in Africa. And um, <coughs> we start with one small hub in Dakar. Now we have four, one in Paris, one in in Mali, one in uh, Burkina Faso, and one opening in, in Ivory Coast. Only in two years, and more are coming. Um, with ecosystem, the, what I like with your, when you, you say it's coming from the nature, is uh, diversity. Mm -hmm. And perhaps that's, that's the main thing. I mean, uh, here we have people talking about health, 
that if you stay only with people talking about health, you're, you're, you're not opening to, to the innovation, actually. So we need to mix our, uh, our health. And what we learn from, the, from also the nature is that you need to test, prototype, make a lot of uh, uh, experimentation, and then coming, you know, errors, it works, it don't work, it don't work, but at, at, at the end, it works. So, uh, so that's also why we need some small uh, pilot uh, in, in, um, uh, to, to go on, on the field. But the, it's good to get this, but when you have something that's working, how you do? <laughs> so uh, perhaps that's the main problem we have now. People are not exchanging. I mean, that's a great uh, initiative, switchment. It's like we get something and then you can talk about it. So it creates the, the space for exchanging and collaboration. And I think uh, that's, that's what we mean. When we talk about collaborative uh, innovation uh, uh, networks, that's what we need to build. And the, the great thing is now with IT of the power and the, the empowering nature of IT is to be connect worldwide. And uh, then how we can come on face-to-face -face, like spaces like SwitchPoint yeah. to also exchange and create more uh, um, formal and more um, tough link, you know. Uh, it says that uh, I think we, we can have connection with only 30 pe people around, knowing their name when we work together. And in a network, you can only have something like yeah. 150 people. We can really exchange with them on a network virtually. So then with that, how you create some small hub. That's the idea behind Jokolab, and that's where we can want to bring some cluster enough to work on the innovation. Uh, so I kind of want to bring it back, and I think one of the reasons why this is probably selected as one of the topics is that, especially in global health, uh, we're seeing this need for ecosystems. We're seeing this need for systems that are interoperable, that can talk together. It basically means you know, this system can talk to that system, so you can share information. And the reason why this has happened is we've kind of evolved to this kind of point now where we have to work together if we're not going to fail. Um, I was kind of involved, the same with like Tobias and others, and kind of being involved in a lot of very small kind of proof of concept pilots say, hey, there's this mobile phone thing. Let's figure out if we could use it to register kids. And the potential is there. Everybody got excited. So every NGO, I'm sure IntraHealth probably has 30 or 40 little pilots, um, tested out these ideas in these countries. And there's a lot of kind of promise and excitement around it. Um, but these are all kind of siloed systems, right? And these systems also we're trying to do, they're kind of monolithic in that they're trying to do all the functions of a healthcare system. So our initial rapid SMS apps, you know, talk to the CHWs, we're the medical record system. Um, but that's not going to fly when we're talking about the complexities of a national level system. Um, so what's, what's actually starting to happen are in, in places like Uganda, because there are so many different projects going on, and there is such a lack of ownership by the government in terms of knowing what's going on, like people not obeying kind of patient privacy issues, not sharing information back up with the ministry, that they actually imposed a moratorium on M Health projects, which is pretty draconian, but that just shows you how far um, things have gotten. So that's kind of one way of approaching it, because there was no kind of coordination between the different players. There's no kind of default APIs or open standards to work with. Um, so. Uganda is a place where we have to kind of work backwards now to figure out what to do um, to allow a thousand flowers to bloom, so to speak. Um, but I think one of the exciting things are, and I, I know IntraHealth is very involved, and Tobias and others, is what's going on in Rwanda around the Open HIE project. So you want to maybe talk a little bit more about how that's different than what's going on in Uganda? Sure, uh, sure. <coughs> I'm very proud to be a collaborator on a new initiative from PEPFAR, the Open Health Information <coughs> Exchange. And what that is, it's a community of communities around the different components that will create this environment and provide those resources for this kind of ecosystem. And uh, so these different communities are working on different pieces. For instance, a registry that will capture all of the facilities. Matt, you've been quite involved in that. And I see Ed down there. Hi, Ed. <laughs> and um, they're also a registry to capture all of the clients, all of the patients who have care, and also to maintain a shared health record. So as a patient may move from a community health worker in a mobile system to a clinic system, for instance, to receive antenatal care, all the way to the hospital to have the delivery, those records, that information will follow them. 
um, provider registry, which will have health worker data, various components like translation services that will help terminology go between the systems, and finally, interoperability layers that will let that all connect. Once all of these things are in place, you can have these thousand flowers bloom. It's not the case where you're suddenly throwing seeds all over the place and you've got your flowers that need low light getting too much and the ones that need a lot of light getting yeah. too little and so on. Instead, you've got everything going where it needs to get its resources <coughs> and to interact to yeah. create this thriving space. So that's a lot of what that's about. Yeah, and sorry to jump in quick. It's, yeah. I think the exciting thing is the fact that a CHW can see a patient yep have a different midwife or doctor at the clinic, and then maybe be referred to the hospital, yep. and the hospital would actually know what's happening at the village. Yep. You think that happens in America? No, no. right? So it's actually, they have, we have a chance to get it right without all the kind of red tape and bureaucracy and, and lobbyists that we deal with here. So yep. it's kind of exciting. Yeah, and it's kind of interesting. Some international standards organizations are really interested in what that group's doing and looking at how this could be brought out of the innovations that are being done right. in these countries can be brought forward for the rest of us. But the thing, uh, when, when you say, is it happening in, in, uh, in, in America, that's the interesting remark. Because sometimes people come and they say, okay, we come for development, so you need to reach that point. Right. But that's when the reference is like the US, or is, if it's coming from France, it's France, and when it's coming from another <coughs> part of the world. But we don't have a disruptive approach, actually. Well, that's what you are talking about. And so sometimes it blocks for a real uh, change of approach and a, and, and a real yeah. change of scale. Uh, I mean, when you see M-Pesa for the mobile banking, I mean, it's, it's totally crazy. It can't happen to in other places because uh, you have too, ma too many lobby and there's too many things and even the habits sometimes people are, are not used to it. Uh, even, you know, we're talking about the biometrics for fingerprints, like, the biggest company, uh, one of the French biggest company on that, uh, it starts with a research in Senegal in the 70s because it was a request of the, of the government. Can you imagine? So this means you have a lot of in innovation going on. I mean, uh, Eric have talked about it and others have, have talked about it. So how you take all those grassroots uh, innovation and how we can go for disruptive, actually, approach because that's what we need now. Uh, uh, and just to add on to what you were saying, Dickie, I think I, I uh, was really excited to learn just in the past couple days that your team at IntraHealth is sort of working from one end of the problem on Rwanda, and then we were working on it from the other end of uh, sort of a, uh, a thousand days system for um, you know, tracking children from you know, conception through the first thousand days of life. And um, we were sort of working on these two different systems and trying to build them in this interoperable way, and then discovering that, you know, lo and behold, we can do a little bit more work and possibly integrate these together to um, achieve some of the things that we talked about with, that you were saying, Matt, with uh, sort of knowing at the community level what happens in the hospital and vice versa. Yeah. Um, yeah. So. You know, I think that's actually a good point, too, is that working in this way to make sure systems will communicate, you yeah. necessarily as development teams have to communicate with each other, yeah. with local developers, with stakeholders, to really create a true ecosystem of communication. And we find synergies we never would have thought yeah. of. Before. I mean, it's yeah. really laying down the infrastructure for coordination. I mean, that's kind of what I really admire about Joko Labs is you're providing yeah. like a, a focus point for like local knowledge. So hey, if I'm the World Bank, as you were describing, comes in, <laughs> says, hey, I have this great idea. You guys should do this. and then. You're like, oh, by the way, the Ministry of Health here has been doing this for 10 years, <laughs> Senegalese programmers. You can kind of be that kind of you know, bridge um, to kind of do it. But, so we're talking, this is all fine and you know, roses, but it's also really, really hard. Um, I just want to touch really briefly. So I've been working in part of this initiative to do this thing called to build a facility registry. So it's basically a way to say, hey, how do we share the name and location of clinics you know, between each other? And technically, it's a very trivial thing to do. Ed and I, basically, on the back of a napkin, had a you know, prototype and working code in a couple of weeks. Was that eight months ago? It's something like that. And uh, we were given the mandate to build this collaboration with a bunch of increasing partners. And long story short, we basically just had to rewrite, throw out all the APIs, throw out all the, our ideas out whenever somebody new came in so they can reintroduce the same idea and we can say, hey, that's great, and they could take ownership of it. Um, so really it's just about kind of 
building consensus, building collaboration. Is, it's, it's really an exercise of collaboration, I kind of find, but, to make these kind of complex things uh, happen. Uh, I think that you get a big point there. Is, is sometimes the technology is really tri trivial. Yeah. I mean, it's not a technological <laughs> issue some main of the time. 80% of the problem is more about collaboration, is more about uh, um, taking commitment from the people on the ground and uh, get people involved in the, in the project. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. but when you need that, is you, you need trust. Right. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's where you get problem actually, because, yeah. and specifically in, in Africa, what, uh, I'm coming from the, the private sector, and when I start Jokolab, and believe me, we start uh, own funding, and I, I stop all my activity to do that. And so, uh, actually I was losing money, but uh, <laughs> uh, it's my choice. But I mean, <laughs> I mean, uh, 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 but when, when I start talking with the, the tech communities, you know, they were saying like, why are you doing this? So they, they, they are not watching at the project. They say, what are you earning in that? And, you know, so trust is not there because of the politics, because of several issues. So they don't trust each other. So, and people are working in silos. So first you need to build trust. And uh, then uh, trust even with the donors and everything. You have so much silly ideas uh, going on the on the field. Yeah. So how you build trust so people can say, okay, the NGO, the developing world, donors, the politics, the techies, the the, the, the beneficiary hold yeah. together, which is the ecosystem actually. Yeah. We'll work together to to find a solution because solution is for for everybody. But you also bring up dollars. And I think one of the advantages too is it also allows for efficiencies where you can't, everybody can't re-engineer the same thing. You want to talk about, as a software <laughs> company, like um, just how difficult this yeah, is? Yeah, I mean, I, I guess just, just briefly, like solving um, some of these problems that platforms like uh, OpenMRS or DHIS2 or uh, RapidSMS or any of the others, those are really hard things to do well and a lot of time and effort went into that. And um, I guess sort of part of our plea for interoperability is um, not wanting to reinvent the wheel. Like we as developers don't want to go and solve the same problems that's been solved you know, 100 times before. Um, so figuring out ways that we can leverage uh, stuff that other people have done in projects like this and make these systems work together to build, I think, sort of what you were talking about, Matt, with this larger, more complex system that you know, takes into account a lot of different things that a lot of different people yeah. have done is really valuable. And I think it just respects other people's work too. Yeah. Like there's nothing more insulting to say, hey, I'm gonna redo what you did because <laughs> I don't think you're very good at it. <laughs> so. No, but also if you want to get adaptation for the last mile, yeah. you really get people from the last mile because yeah. uh, you need to understand the situation there. Yeah. You can do it from the city or, mm -hmm. or whatever. So that's why you need also to involve more and more local people to be involved exactly. and to get the capacity to engage on that. But yeah. when I look at uh, the, the, like the techies, if we're talking about uh, software, uh, they don't know about the issue of health or uh, I mean, uh, climate change or whatever. We have run some competition. I mean, solution was terrific. I mean, more in a terrific way that it was really uh, frightening because it wasn't getting to the point. Because the techies don't, don't know that. They don't take the, the, the issue. So you need to, to um, bring them to uh, the, the, the problem. You know? And so now we try to organize some events when we bring people from the business side, I mean, health or whatever, some different issue to connect with the techies so they can understand more what's the problem are and how they can find solution. Right. So we need to break the silo and break, to bridge more and more so you can engage. And when we get some uh, open source software, so then they can work on it even after. Right. So it's not stopping after a project, it's not stopping after a, uh, an event or a competition. It goes around and then we'll get uh, some innovation coming. Right. So I'm hearing pretty clearly. It sounds like um, Interoperability is not just technology, it's also socio-political with everyone. Perfect. Reuse, remix, recycle, getting back to yeah. IntraHealth Open. And wow, the ecosystem is up here on stage. The ecosystem is out there in the audience. Welcome to the ecosystem. <laughs> I, I think I just want to maybe end up by, we were trying to describe how do you 
describe to somebody non-technical what an API is. And Tobias said, oh, an API really is a plug, right? You have different types of plugs. It basically got all the people that make gadgets say, let's agree upon a way to put that gadget in a wall, right? And you need to have that kind of plug. You need to show the Senegalese developers how to plug into that network, right? Otherwise, you're building these devices that can't connect and create more value. So I don't know if that's a good yeah. analogy. But, yeah. but even for the non-techies, because eh? yeah. uh, yeah. uh, like documentation can be a local language. Yeah. So then it's changed your perspective. I mean, uh, you can even engage other people to interact with the software. Yeah. Yeah. So I don't know. All right. Good. There it is. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you all.